What I have here is a Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Uh, this is a very sorry scene to a lot of animals when they try to cross the road. They wind up getting hit by a car and um, this happens to a lot of snakes. Basically what I'm going to do with this snake, because he's not very badly damaged, is uh, we'll use him for some dissection and see what makes these animals tick. This is an Eastern Diamondback which we found uh, laying on the side of the road got hit by a car, we're going to proceed with a dissection and the skinning of the snake. Just. Alright, let's just take this snake and we're going to have to flip him over. I'm going to have to turn him this way. Okay. Right. I'm going to proceed with the dissection here. We're going to start from the upper neck area, which is up in here. From the first scale, you'll see the divide right there. We're going down the ventral scales to make an incision down the center of the ventral scales. And all we do first is make the total length of the incision and then we'll do the separation. Okay. Mm -hmm the lower abdominal area. Right down to the collegia. Now we're going to separate the skin off the sides here. This hard tube here is the trachea, going down into the lung area, which is over here. The lung should exceed about one to two thirds the length of the body, which should probably succeed down here somewhere. This is all fatty tissue in here with fat cells. Wrapped around this is all the intestinal area down in this area. This is your liver right here. And this is your heart. Well, what it, what it, all this stuff is sitting underneath the thin membrane tissue, which I really didn't want to separate at the point. Okay, what we're going to do is separate the skin from the snake's body now. Okay, y'all ready? Okay. <laughs> Single subquartals right down to the rattle. We'll separate the rattle here. There you go. Okay. Here we have the fangs of the rattlesnake. Now you'll notice that there's two fangs here. One of these fangs is actually functional, the other one is not. What actually happens is, is the snake tends to grow new fangs to replace the old fangs that are now functioning. Just like a shark has teeth, these snakes will constantly recede their teeth. Or all snakes will constantly recede their teeth. And if you notice on the other side here, we also have a double set of fangs. Only one is functional. When they usually go through this transition, Can you the other basically, one? Um, Sometimes the fangs on both both ends are non-functional because they get clogged until the new one is then uh, replacing the old one. If you notice a very interesting feature here, which is this cavity, 
in the upper portion of the uh, skull. And we'll actually turn it this way. Uh, I don't know if you can yeah, actually can see, see that. I see There's that. two holes. Actually, in that section there is where the Jacobson organ would be located, where they'll actually place the tongue that flickers inside of the mouth to uh, analyze those particles that it picks up. Um, and that will be located in this upper area here. Just maybe turn him around one more time. Just show what the rattler looks like. I can't really tell what it looks like. There you go, that's better. More of a profile would be nice. We notice the very powerful muscles surrounding the jaw area here. Underneath these muscles here will actually be where the venom sac is located. There's no connecting bone structure between the two uh, lower mandibles. Uh, it's loose so each mandible can function separate to itself. So yeah. actually when the snake swallows, he kind of does this. Uh -huh. Down its throat, kind of like walking it. 